Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. This um, section 29 of the ATA, sir, <clears throat> on the preventive detention of a suspected terrorist, is this not merely an exercise of the plenary legislative power of Congress creating an exception to Article 125 of the Revised No, Your Honor. It's, uh, it's uh, an abuse of discretion of the Congress because that would authorize an executive agency like the Anti-Terrorism Council to issue a warrant of arrest. No, because I, 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 uh, an authority to detain assumes that it is also a warrant to arrest. I'm sorry, Council. I'm just referring to the extension of Article 125, the extension given by Congress. Is this not a legislative prerogative? Yes, Your Honor. It is uh, a legislative prerogative because we do not uh, enact uh, unrepealable laws or laws which could not be amended. But a law can, always, can only be amended if the amendatory law is constitutional. Okay. I would submit, Your Honor, that Section 29 is grossly unconstitutional because it violates Section 2 of Article 3 of the Constitution, which requires judicial warrant of arrest based on probable cause to be determined personally by a judge, not by an executive agency. Congressman, uh, can we consider <coughs> this legislation a policy determination of the Congress, considering the unique nature, complexities, and repercussions of the crime of terrorism, which this court cannot intrude into in the absence of grave abuse of discretion? Your Honor, uh, Policy determination is vested in Congress, but, but policy determination is circumscribed by the Constitution. And I would submit, Your Honor, that if a policy consideration of Congress, like Section 29, is an affront to the Constitution, then this honorable court can exercise judicial review. What particular provision in the Constitution is violated by this extension of time as provided for in Section 29? It's, it's, uh, there are a number of provisions, aside from the fact that, the, that no warrant of arrest shall issue uh, without probable cause to be determined by the judge. Uh, there, this uh, provision should only, should also violate presumption of innocence the right to bail, to citizenly file bail, the right against torture, because this extended and prolonged detention would be inimical to the presumption of innocence, to the right to file bail, and also the right against torture. Now, uh, counsel, one of the petitioners here stated that uh, this section 29 violates in particular Section 18, Article 7 of the 1987 Constitution. Do you agree with that? Well, uh, let me just uh, refresh my memory, my memory about Section During 18. During the suspension, I would like to refresh ah, yes, During the suspension yes. of the privilege of the writ, any person thus arrested or detained shall be judicially charged within three days. Otherwise, yes, Your Honor. Be released. I, I now recall that Section yeah. 18 of Article uh, uh, 8 of the Constitution. And uh, under that provision, once uh, the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus is suspended, no person shall be detained for more than three days without being uh, uh, referred to the judicial authority. Otherwise, he should be released. And I would submit, Your Honor, that this would apply to all crimes, not only with respect to rebellion or acts relative to invasion. Now, under Section 29 of the ATA, is the writ of privilege, is the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus suspended? Effectively, Your Honor, uh, that is not suspended. 
Your so Honor, but effectively the right to 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 secure habeas corpus can be effectively suspe uh, suspended or denied because the police authorities or the ATC can always say uh, that the person is being detained under the written authorization of the Anti-Terrorism Council, which is subject to constitutional challenge. That's all, Congressman. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor.